Ahmed Dulaipos to another episode of the Grappler Anime Podcast. If you're new here to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the Lipo Army. So I am starting it off with Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 168. I do know somebody asked me a long time ago, hey, why don't you review Jujutsu Kaisen weekly or are you going to review it weekly? And the answer to that is probably not. So in this podcast i'll review some manga i'll talk about some news articles from time to time and also about anime and stuff which i definitely do got to talk about uh mushuku tensei the the last episode that came out or i, I think it's the last week it's last week's episode because a new episode came out today which i do got to watch episode 10 of mushuku tensei i definitely do got to talk about that but let's talk about uh kaisen real quick so we got a cover page of Yuji, which somebody said in on Twitter that Yuji is starting to look more like Sukuna, and I am going to definitely agree. It gave me Sukuna vibes. Like Yuji now gives me a little bit Sukuna vibes when I see him. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the scar on the top of the right eye, but that scar looks really cool. He looks cool, and he's with his actual brothers. Yes, these uh curse womb death paintings are his brothers and chozo is there too with his nose scar Chozo is one of my favorite characters of the series he's awesome remember when we got the introduction to that other character i forgot his name uh from the clan that uh megumi's from from you know that clan and chozo was just clowning this dude i was like what like chozo is, is built like that he's built like that like especially with his death uh the the blood uh art he was using oh like it, it's so awesome it's so awesome right so we have Sho, uh, shozo then we have eso and the other person is named keshisu i'm not gonna lie to you i forgot the names of the other ones so yeah yuji and his brothers uh, um two of them shozo and eso they they look both like humans right and then uh, keshisu is the only one that looks like some monster like just a regular uh, monster, which is completely fine, but that's Yuji with his brothers. And it's really sad still to think about that Yuji actually did kill one of his brothers without knowing about it. And I was going to make a whole video about Yuji and Cain and Abel, but then I realized, no, that, that video wouldn't make sense because uh, Yuji didn't know that was his brother that he killed. But yeah, he, he still did that, right? And yeah, so the chapter continues right and we see this dangling eye drop but before i talk about that um uh, akutami in this weekly shonen jumps author comments he was talking about he has a lot of he has a lot of manga like somebody it he says it was embarrassing when someone told me you have hunter hunter volumes all over your house that was hilarious you know why because akutami is a big fan of hunter hunter it, and not hilarious in a funny way but it's cool that he admires um he admires Togashi that much that he has all the, a lot a lot probably all of the volumes of Hunter Hunter right so yeah the chapter starts off with the eyeball exploding this guy Iori Hasenoki 35 points and it's a 401 like Megumi is not catching no breaks the girl that tricked Megumi into coming uh, to this building and stuff is basically fodder she's fodder that they don't care about and she's still like very loyal and stuff to the person that Reggie, Reggie Star that has 41 points, uh, that's trying to take down Megumi. And Megumi is trying to explain to her, look, like they don't care about you. And she doesn't care about that. She's just like, she wants words. She, she's a person that wants, you know, people to, to, uh, to tell her words, nice words. So she actually, you know, goes to their side. Cause she's like, say you'll protect me and that you like me like that's what she wants validation right she wants a hero she wants her prince charming and i'm not gonna lie to you megumi ain't on that megumi is not a simp he, megumi is megumi is like um sasuke you, you know like in anime and manga there, there's it's shonen there's the sasuke's there's the hiei's there's the i'm trying to think you know the the darker edgier characters but megumi's not edgy he's cool he's like really cool co uh calm and collective and then he doesn't care he's just like trash who cares more about words than deeds and like he he, he just be saying his mind and he just over here 401 battles 
And one thing I do want to mention, he does kill somebody, which I am not surprised about because Megumi, he's not like Yuji where he's going to hesitate to kill somebody. I'm not saying Yuji never killed somebody because he did. Remember, he killed his brother without knowing that's his brother, but he felt really bad about it. Like he felt like this like sense of guilt, which makes sense. Megumi over here, yeah, he killed this person. And after he does it, he's like, what am I doing? And then he's like, we'll need more points in the future, but there's no longer any need for Sumiki to participate in the killing. Don't lose your head, trust in the others. You will need these guys' points. All you need to do is wait and away any sparks that fly your way. So whoever gets in his way, he's willing to kill them, which makes sense, right? Yuji might be like, okay, I'm just going to defeat them so they don't move or anything. Megumi is different. Megumi is just like, yeah, I'm going to just kill you. But towards the end... Actually, before talking about the end, he almost activated his domain expansion, but it's still incomplete. And it, it makes sense because he hasn't trained or anything to try to complete his domain, to perfect his domain. He says, but it's incomplete, so I can't seal the barrier to trap my opponents. If I expand the effort to bring it out and they run out of, run off, run off only to come back, that'd be really bad, which makes sense. So... They could still escape out of the barrier because it's an incomplete domain expansion, but it's really cool. So hopefully in the future he does master it and then he just has this face like, yeah, who, who's next? But it was so funny because this guy, um, let me go back to the, the panel. Um, his name is ha Hasenoki. So Hasenoki, his sorcery is basically anything off his body explodes. Anything if it touches explodes. So he takes one of his two, spits it out like a uh, water gun from pokemon hits this guy straight in the in the head with it and this guy i don't know what he's dressed up as a uh heart happy power ranger i don't know and he's like zero damage and he's i guess he's gonna be like the comedy type character because earlier he was like two against one does that really seem fair like he's like a heroic type person there's a word for people like you cowards and cowardly attacks don't work so he takes zero damage from the attack which I'm just like, this is really interesting that he took zero damage. And now I'm wondering what is his sorcery? Like what type of sorcery does he have? Maybe he's just, imagine his sorcery is just damage mitigation. So he doesn't take any damage at all. But it's a lie because I'm looking at the panel and his nose is bleeding. <laughs> and then he has blood spurring from, from the top of his head. So he's lying. He's lying. But he has to have some type of sorcery. But he has uh, zero points. His name is Fumi Hiko Takaba. And I definitely do want to learn more about him. And just based on the introduction with him lying and stuff, we got uh, an Usopp in Jujutsu Kaisen, which is funny. And I, I definitely do... I do like this character. I like the character. He's funny so far. And I guess he's going to team up with Megumi. So that would be really funny. Uh, a really funny character like... Takaba and Megumi together would definitely blend well together. So I'm really excited about it. And Megumi in this chapter, he finds about the added rule to the Cullen game. So he does know that Yuji did succeed in adding the rule, which was actually really cool. Overall, awesome chapter. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the series Ayashimon chapter 5. And there will be spoilers. So if you do not want to get spoiled, just go to the next part. So uh, one thing... I didn't really like too much was the revelation of Maruo and basically his revelation of what he is. I was saying that maybe he's a half Ayashimon and half human, but that doesn't seem to be the case, which is completely fine, you know. And Urara is the one that comes with this conclusion. So he's actually a Mare Bito, which I don't know what that is. And then, you know, we got the big explanation. But when I was first reading the chapter, I was like, what is that? So she says, Sakata no Kintoki. Minamoto no Yoritomo, Tawara no Tota, like those legendary strongmen and yokai slayers, he is a rare breed of human born only once every few generations. Forget the random Ayashimon rabble, he has the strength to go toe to toe with the executives of a major syndicate. So he's powerful enough, or he has the strength to go head to head with executives, right? which I do want to talk about this a little later on because something happens later in the chapter. So that's why he's at this strong because he's like one once in a generation type of human, which is cool, which I, I, I do like, right? But then later on, 
this organization comes and everybody is just frozen in place so one of them has like a power to freeze people which is really cool and Urara herself can't even do anything about it like they're this powerful this uh order right and they're the great public safety has an eye on us already right they say we of the own moyo bureau are always looking after the peace in shinjuku you know watching everyone everywhere all the time and not only that the reason they even came here to restrain them for a little bit and then leave is because one-on-one duels are acceptable and stuff but they have to put a barrier first which they didn't so the whole building is wrecked and obviously regular people in shinjuku because yes shinjuku is full of ayashimon that control the district and stuff but there's still a lot of people in Shinjuku that are human, so they obviously will see the destruction and be like, okay, what is happening here? Why did this building just randomly collapse? There's no demolition team nearby and stuff. They're going to question stuff, right? And the interesting thing about this chapter is that they're talking to somebody. They're like, oh, yeah, they're not a danger right now, but there's something up with Urara and stuff, the girls. But who, who cares about them right now, right? And then they lead to the Enma Syndicate. Talking about, oh, somebody's leaking information for the Enma Syndicate, which earlier in the chapter, we actually got a revelation that there's a person in the Enma Syndicate that basically, I guess, Urara knows, right? So the chapter was really good. I did enjoy it. Uh, I just didn't like the revelation to that fast. Like, it would have been better if, you know, we, the readers, could have been a little bit more surprised, could have been speculating. A little more but after five chapters we got the revelation of that and then obviously in the beginning of the chapter he won his one-on-one -on -one ritual duel which was cool so now they uh have control of this office which is basically reduced to rubble but there was some information that urara could use and yeah that's ayashimon chapter five in a nutshell it was a decent chapter for what we got all right so i did promise to talk about mushuku tensei episode 10 so episode 10 of Mushoku Tensei, there will obviously be spoilers. We actually see Rudis and his team, uh, Undead, uh, no, it's called Dead End, sorry about that. And they're going in this like snowy area and then they pass two people that are very strong. One of them has a curse that all living things have a fear of him. And he's basically a god. He's considered number two in the world's strongest. But really, he's number one. If it wasn't for his curse, and he has a vendetta against the man god, and the man god is the one that gives Rudius advice from time to time when he pulls them in, pulls Rudius into this world and stuff. Now, this series is just amazing. One of my favorite series I have watched in a long time. One of my my if one of if this is like a top three isekai of all time for me. Like it's. Every episode is interesting. Every episode is interesting. I like how the story develops. I like how the story dives into different characters. And in episode 10, seeing Rudy's team get destroyed that bad. And Rudy is basically literally should have died if he did not get healed by the person that inflicted that wound upon him. It's just, it's just crazy. Now, something is we still haven't seen... The girl again that, that Rudius gave, gave food to that was like a uh, goddess or something like that or a demon god or whatever. She's really cool. And I even heard that people in the animation studio were arguing who was going to animate her, who was going to draw her. I'm like, that 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 is really funny when I see little stories like that. But yeah, the series was awesome. And even, um, even the... I got to look for the name, names of the characters real quick. Yeah, even the guy that he's from the that race with the green hair and stuff, he he couldn't do anything. So the guy's name was Orsted. Yeah, Orsted, this guy, he's just broken. Orsted is just broken. The curse of the the curse of the of the guy with the green hair is actually getting broken because just because he cut off his green hair and all that stuff. But it's cool. It's cool. I love the series. It's really awesome. That episode, I was just like, please don't kill Rudius. And even Rudius himself was like, okay, I'm dead. All right. Man, God, I'm dead. Like, there, why didn't you warn me? And then we actually figure out that or Orsted, because of his curse, 
the man guy can't even see his actions, what he's going to do and stuff. He didn't even know that Rudius was actually going to run into him. So the man god is not, I guess, Omni something. I forgot. I don't know. Like, it does, the man god it does, can't see y'all, basically, right? He's not the watcher. So, yeah, awesome episode. And those are just my little thoughts about it. Like, it was like an impossible situation for them to win. And they definitely did not win.